Uh, yeah, good morning, Kyle. Just um, a couple things. Dear Orlando Ledbetter from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And uh, that was the one that liked your bow tie, so I got that mine <laughs> for you today. Okay. Uh, hey, just uh, from back in high school when you were playing quarterback, how did, did any of that help you in the passing game when you moved over to receiver? I know you played some, some D-line, too. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of didn't like playing quarterback. so But I did kind of get a feel for it and realize uh, how they think and how they read coverages. So it kind of helped me, you know, realizing uh, what I can do in certain coverages, like I said. So, um, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, it kind of helped me a lot. But uh, not I don't really remember too much of, you know, any of my quarterback days. Right, right. Hey, and then another thing that, um, you know, uh, Coach Mullen talked to us about, he said uh, early on as a – uh, I guess it would have been a freshman. Uh, you used to work out with the receivers, and that really helped your route running. Uh, mm -hmm. is, could you back that story up and tell us a little bit about it? One hundred percent. Um, I used to. It was late nights. Uh, There's a lot of the older guys uh, that you know were mentors to me: Van Jefferson, Tyree Cleveland, Josh Hammond, um, Freddie Swain. Those are the guys that you know took me under the wing. And when I was playing receiver, they uh, like. We did a lot late night, a lot of nights at the indoor where we were just grinding, cone work. And that's why I feel like that kind of helped me a lot. So, um, you know, when I went back to tight end, I could use some of those moves. And it's like, you don't, you don't see tight end using receiver moves sometimes. So they kind of gave me an edge, and I feel like that helped me a lot this year. Jeff Schultz? Yeah, um, along the lines of working out with receivers, you worked out with Calvin, uh, I understand, Calvin really this – this this off season, could you just tell tell us about how that came about and specifically what you guys did together? Uh, we we had the same we had one of the same uh, receiver trainers, and then uh, Steph Brown, who was the top shelf. Um, we just was working on breaks and you know regular cone drills, but I just like to kind of see how he runs his routes. Man, I know I won't be running just like him, but you know some some things that he used to you know get in and out of his breaks and you know and him to you know win all his matchups. Did, did he talk to you at all about the, you know, the transition to the NFL? And also, was there any talk at all during the workouts about the possibility that you could end up playing together? Um, not, not yet. We supposed to, you know, I, I train. I, I think I train with him Monday. So y'all see him Monday, and we'll talk. But uh, no, we didn't. We didn't talk yesterday or today. But uh, um, you know, I'm excited to get to work with him. Uh, he's a great receiver. He has great feet. You know, so just to train with him and be on the same team with him. But we had, we, uh, we had one conversation. He was like, you know, what's the land talking about? And I was like, and I think, I, I don't know if they're taking me. I think I either go four or six. So he's like, you'll love it here. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, once I got picked, now I'm like, pretty excited what's going on. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Uh, I want to go back to Arch Archbishop Wood for a minute. Uh, I was talking to Steve Devlin. What were those late night workouts like when he would have to like come and grab you and off the field? Like you organized those, right? Like what, walk me through that, what that was all about, why you did that. Um, when I first got there my junior year, Mark Webb, uh, he, he started it off and that's where I kind of started doing it. And um, he showed me drills that I could be doing. That's back when I was playing. Uh, I was playing tight end, actually, I'm sorry. And he was, he was a receiver at the time. Now he's a safety, but we was doing drills after drills, core work, you know, just out there talking, having fun. But, you know, you don't realize it's getting a little late. But, and that's when Coach Devin would come out, all right, you got to go home. But we were just getting extra work. But uh, he's someone that kind of helped me, I would say, like, learn how to do that because, you know, I wasn't doing it my freshman year. Um, but when, you know, once I learned that, you know, he, he it helped me a lot, I feel like, because that's extra reps that, you know, people aren't getting. People are going home and getting in the shower and just, talking about other things, but, you know, we, we're outside working. Uh, and I heard about this fairly well-known tackle that you made on Micah Parsons in a title <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I scooped him. And that's something that uh, me and Micah always laugh and joke about because we beat him and, you know, he didn't rush for over 50 yards. So that's something that we always talk about. And he, he hate that part of me because, you know, he's, he always liked to say we recruited. But, no, nah, we just had good players and they wasn't ready for us. Charles Odom. Terry Fontenot, uh, of course, had a lot of compliments uh, uh, about you, but one that uh, stood out to me was um, 
how we talked about you had unusual maturity for a 20 year old. Um, can you um, say where you think um, that that came from, how you developed that maturity and 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 what kind of role will that play in in you being able to come in and 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 handle the pressures that go with being a, a number four overall pick? Um, I think it's just the people I was around, the people I grew up with. They kind of I was always the younger kid that hung out with older guys and you know, all older athletes. So I, I kind of like got a lot of wisdom, a lot of ways to, I feel like I learned pretty early, just be a fly on the wall and just, you know, soak up everything that you're hearing. And I feel like that kind of translates because, you know, like you said, being 20, 20 years old, being the number four pick, that's kind of, that's not usual. And to just, it's a lot of things that be coming at me and to, to be able to handle it and, you know, do the right thing. That's something that I've, I've learned through time. And it's, it's more things to learn, but, just being mature, that's something that I kind of wanted to make sure that, you know, it wasn't like a, a question for anybody was, you know, is he going to be mature at the next level? Is he going to do anything to, like blow all his money or, you know, make reckless decisions? But, you know, I feel like I've, I've got like a straight path. My parents have done a great job of, you know, just telling me and showing me the way. So I find that kind of, you know, shows. Kelsey Conway. Kyle, who have been some of your biggest um, influences in life? Um, I'll say my my mom, my dad, uh, my grandfather. You know, they're, they they have done a lot. They are blue collar workers. They you know showed me the way. Um, I just feel like you know when you as a kid you always follow what your dad does, and you know my dad isn't a, isn't a man of a thousand words, so he just head down and working. And I used to just ask him like. What, what is it like? And he just was saying, in life, you got to get things done. You got to be able to provide, provide for your family. And just watch him as I'm growing up. I want to you know, emulate him in some ways. And then obviously, you know, the scouts knew about you going into your final season at Florida, but that was kind of your breakout season. What do you think was the biggest reason for why you were able to reach the level that you did in your final year at Florida? Uh. Weirdly, I'll say the pandemic kind of helped me a lot because we didn't have a spring. So I was able to get bigger, faster, stronger with a lot of time. And I was just I had more free time, I guess you said, because we didn't have a spring. Uh, it got canceled the, the day before spring, I think it was or like the, the first day. So, you know, I had the, I had the time to you know invest in my body, invest in my game. And so it kind of helped me on, on the field because my mental, I feel like I just knew what was happening. I was watching more film. I was kind of, you know, knowing the game. So all of that kind of, you know, transcended into the season and it, it helped me a lot. Justin Felder. L let me follow up on what you were just saying then. You had the pandemic last year and you made the most of it. So what do you do now? I mean, it's normally it would be a rookie camp in a week or two, then OTAs. Now it's kind of up in the air. So what's your plan? Same thing, Brian, just getting in football shape, you know, being ready to be the, be in the best shape I can mentally, physically. So I'm just, you know, still preparing, getting bigger, faster, stronger. And on the on the same line, I saw yesterday you said, I, I think you said you got a chance to talk to Matt Ryan a little bit. In the past, he's had receivers out on his own in California doing their own kind of like private passing camp players only thing. Did he mention that? And are you planning on getting some time with your quarterback before the stuff officially starts? Um, I do plan. Uh, I think we're going to catch up and get lunch this week, but uh, we, he didn't. Admit, I think maybe we'll talk about what you're talking about, but he didn't mention it. Allison Estranglo. Hey, I know it's only been a couple of days, but how has your life changed since going number four overall in the NFL draft? What have these past couple of days been like for you? Uh, I wouldn't say they kind of changed yet because everything's still kind of slow with the, you know, with COVID, so everything's not on a regular schedule. But um, I would say just mentally it changed because now I'm a professional. I'm in the NFL, so I'm not dreaming for. So to be here and just walk in the building, I was like, this is this is real. Like this is happening. So I mean, it's a lot going to change in the next, I would say, you know, month or two. But right now it's kind of just, just kind of chill right now. And then the uh, we all saw that you're going to be wearing number eight. Uh, that's kind of very unique for tight ends in the NFL. Can you talk about how that went down and, and how you either did you pick it or was it the the Falcons that told you? And what's the reaction been like to wearing a single digit? 
Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to keep my hand in four, but uh, Cordell Patterson had it has it, and um, you know he's a he's a vet, so I didn't I didn't want to pay for that. <laughs> so um, I just you know Coach Smith sent me the picture of the, the numbers, and I was talking to really he said they ate hard, and I was like, all right. So I was I was thinking about it, I was trying to picture it. I think I wore eight one time in a bowl game when I was younger, like an OD camp or something like that. So I just went back to that picture, and I was like, hmm. This isn't that bad. So, you know, when I picked it, I was pretty excited with it, you know, with what it is and to have a single digit. So, I think it looks good, too. I just seen it. So, pretty happy with it. Mark Bradley? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. We have time for two follow ups. Anybody? I'll ask just a. Who was one of the first Falcons players that reached out to you after you got drafted? I mean, have you heard from, you know, Matt Ryan or anyone on the phone and what did they say to you? Uh, my, I, I haven't even sit down and looked at my phone yet, but uh, I, uh, Matt Ryan was, you know, one of the numbers that I did see. And um, he was he was just the one that I did catch. But uh, for the most part, I felt like when, you know, when I looked through it, I'll probably find more. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll just testify. I can't remember if you were asked this the other night or not, Kyle, but coming to a team that's going to be going through some transition, uh, new coaching staff and whatever, I don't know how much of that you you experienced at Florida, whatever, or in your past playing football, but can you just talk about that mindset of a player coming to a team um, that basically is going to sort of push reset here? Um, I, I feel like sometimes in life you do need a reset, and I think for this organization with the new staff that was brought in there, you know, we're going to change some things around and, and, and get back on the map. And I'm pretty excited to see, you know, what this, what the, what the new coaching staff has for us. And I'm, I'm excited to win. Thank you. Hey, hey Kyle, I, I got one more for you too. Uh, going back to that Georgia game when, when you got hit, what, what was going through, what was, what was that whole experience like? Because that was really the first time you had, I think, ever gotten any sort of real injury. Like, what was that like that two weeks? Like, what did that do to you for you? Oh, it was kind of weird. I mean, everybody asked me, did it hurt? And I was like, I didn't really feel it. It just kind of came fast. Um, I didn't even know my nose was broke. I didn't know my helmet came down. I just was like, I seen him laying on me. And I was like, you know, get off me. I'm a little dizzy. So I, you know, I got myself together and, um, you know, got up. But I mean, that two weeks and when I had the nose surgery, that was kind of weird for me because I've never been in so much pain and my face was swollen and I never like, Taught of surgery and um, just missing those games. It was hard, you know, sitting on the sideline and uh, or sitting in the box, you know, when I couldn't be down there playing with my brothers. But um, I think it was a time where I could just self reflect and and just, you know, coach the younger guys that were in the game, you know, Keon Zipper, Kimari Gamble, Jonathan Odom, those are the guys that stepped up and, you know, for the position in the correct way. You said self reflect. Is there something, anything you learned in that two weeks about yourself or, or, or kind of about, about your game that, or that you saw that? that altered things? Oh, I was just thinking maybe maybe this was something that, you know, was should in a bigger injury. So I was just kind of like, just be thankful that it wasn't anything worse and just take these two weeks off and then get back and get back in the game. 